Hello friends, this video on ecosystem part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Yes, we have covered even the third aspect of ecosystem and the third aspect was energy flow. So now we will talk about the last and the fourth aspect of ecosystem that is nutrient cycling. So here we will talk about how nutrients are cycling, cycled within the ecosystem how nutrients get transferred from one group of organisms to another. So that is what we will see in nutrient cycling. So before we talk about nutrient cycling, let us start with nutrients. What are nutrients? These are those substances that nourish an organism, helping them to survive and grow. So nutrients are basically those uh, those substances which are present in our food and that is why we eat food because they provide us the nutrients and we need them to survive we need them to get energy to perform our work and without these nutrients we will not be able to survive whether you talk about an animal or a plant all of them need nutrients so in case of human beings we eat food and our nutrients come through the food in case of plants they get the nutrients from the soil how do they get it through their roots so that is why they have root hairs and the root hairs will absorb the uh, dissolved minerals and nutrients from the soil and that's how the plants will get the nutrients now what do we mean by nutrient cycling it is nothing but cycling means movement so movement of nutrients through various components of ecosystem so by now you have already seen that the different components of ecosystem the living and the non-living components they are constantly interacting with each other so every time there is some transfer of energy or food from one organism to another so at the same time there is a movement of nutrient which is also taking place so this movement of nutrient is known as nutrient cycling now when I talk about nutrients, all of these nutrients have their specific cycles like we have carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, phosphorus cycle, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, manganese, iron, copper, boron etc. So they are all nutrients and all of them have a specific cycle in the ecosystem like how they get transferred from one organism to another group of organism. So now in this lesson, we are not going to talk about all uh, the nutrient cycle like nitrogen cycle, carbon cycle. These are some of the cycles which have already been discussed in your previous lessons. So I will not repeat them. So what we will take up here is the phosphorus cycle and we will also take up the carbon cycle. So these are the two cycles which we will discuss in as a part of this lesson. So these cycles are nutrient cycles are also called as biogeochemical cycles. Cycle. Bio means life, geo means earth, chemical means chemicals. So since these nutrients are being transferred between various life forms on the earth, that is why they are called biogeochemical cycle. Now let us look at the different types of nutrient cycle. So nutrient cycles also are of two types, gaseous cycle and sedimentary cycle. These are the two types of nutrient cycle. So gaseous cycle here, the transportation of nutrients happen through atmosphere. That is why the name gaseous. It is derived from gas. So it, it, it actually helps in transferring the nutrients through atmosphere, through the air. Examples are carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, water cycle, oxygen cycle. These are all examples of gaseous cycle. Now why it happens through atmosphere? Because atmosphere is the reservoir of various gases. So hence it is called gaseous cycle. Sedimentary cycle, so the term sedimentary is derived from sediments. So sediment is something which is present under the soil on the earth. So here transportation of nutrient happens through the earth's crust. So that is why the name sedimentary cycle because earth crust is the reservoir of the sediments. Now examples of sedimentary cycle are sulfur cycle, phosphorus cycle. So these are all sedimentary cycle. So here we will discuss one gaseous cycle and one sedimentary cycle. So we have chosen carbon cycle among the gaseous cycle and phosphorus cycle among the sedimentary cycle. Now we have already discussed nitrogen cycle in one of our previous lessons. So if you want to have a quick recap of how the nitrogen cycle looks like, so you can just have a look here. However, I am not going to discuss about the nitrogen cycle step by step here. But if you want, you can refer to your previous lesson to get a better understanding in detail about the nitrogen cycle. 
So what happens in the process of nitrogen cycle? Quite a few important steps take place here like nitrogen fixation, uh, nitrification, ammonification, denitrification. So these are some of the important steps which are part of the nitrogen cycle. So basically what happens here is the atmospheric nitrogen in, in the atmosphere nitrogen is present in abundance almost 78 percent of the constituent of the atmosphere is nitrogen so it is quite abundant in the atmosphere now this atmospheric nitrogen is fixed by a process called nitrogen fixation into the soil so there are nitrogen fixing bacteria which are present in the legume of in the roots of the leguminous plants so these nitrogen fixation fixing bacteria they will fix the atmospheric nitrogen into the soil so that is the job of nitrogen fixing bacteria so this is the first step that is called nitrogen fixation now once the nitrogen is fixed into the soil what happens here here you can see it happen what happens is there is a process called ammonification where formation of ammonia from nitrogen takes place in, ammonia is something which can be present in the soil and this will help in the growth of the plants further because the plants need all these stuffs right plants need nitrogen because nitrogen is a uh, major nutrient or a macronutrient now how do we get ammonia this ammonia can come from many different ways one option is through the decomposers when the decomposers they undergo decomposition so they also lead to the formation of ammonia so that is how also ammonia gets fixed into the soil at the same time there are certain set of another bacteria called nitrifying and denitrifying bacteria what do they do they just do the reverse process so they keep converting the ammonia nitrates which are present in the soil into nitrates and these nitrates are further converted into atmospheric nitrogen so that is how the cycle gets completed because in atmosphere also we need nitrogen at the same time we also need nitrogen in the soil so with the help of all these nitrifying denitrifying nitrogen fixing bacteria we are able to manage nitrogen between atmosphere and soil so that is how nitrogen cycle works now we will talk about thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again